Welcome back to what, uh, Welcome to Demon School Remicon and the review episode 3. I like the last episode where I discussed two episodes of the series. This one I'm discussing freaking eight. Yes, eight episodes. Covering one entire story arc and half of another story arc. Here, this one I'm discussing episodes eight to fifteen. Why am I discussing this many? Because that's how much I got done today before I got this video. Because I got the first few done before I left work this morning. And a lot of basically was either basically like on the bus on the way to work. Uh, a couple before my ship, at least about three before my ship even started. And one, most of my break, and I finished it up on the bus way home. And I started episode 16, but I'm not going to discuss episode 16 just yet. Now, the first episode picks up right where episode 17 left off. It's weird that this epi first episode is not considered part of the Babylon and Roman arc. Given the fact that the first, uh, one of the chapters adapted for this episode is from the actual final chapter of the, of the previous arc. I, yeah, it's really weird though, because this one is kind of weird. Where they adapt 13 for this episode, for episode 8, and they adapt 17, which is the last chapter of the arc. I have no idea what it is for, so. You have Clara being like, being very, let's say, worried about Aroma, thinks that, that, that Aumi, where she might steal him from her. So she basically breaks down her door after one of their live manga sessions. And of course, he politely leaves and says, We'll just, fit, we'll be done for today. And, of course, she's worried about her sexiness. So, she has a role in the deduction course. Yes, she seriously roles in a course where the teacher is an actual succubus. Yes, a succubus. If you don't know what the heck a succubus is, a succubus is a type of demon that, let's just say, whenever a guy sleeps with this damn... When, 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 uh, apparently, when he does with the guy, the guy dies. In the middle of basically having a good, good happy moment with, with, with the succubus. That's the most polite way I can say exactly what happens when you're with the succubus. That's why I read in fiction. I per and and no, as far as I can tell, I don't think succubus actually exist in real life. So my my, my cue is prostitutes of that, but not really. No. So she uses her eye to measure everybody's sexiness, and there's one who looks like a giant finger. Anyways, she couldn't measure her at all. We'll get the Clara. Now, Elizabeth, uh, that's actually one of the characters, one who's basically a very tall woman with a big chest. She's got like an 80% sexiness. Claire is a 2% sexiness. But later on in the episode, after, like, l l l l later on in the very same episode, measures her again after her interaction with uh, Aruma, and her sexiness improved from 2% to 10%. Now, I'm not really... It's it's something what it is for the episode. Now, in these particular episodes, we actually have sort of the first of several times in the series we have a, a basically a promotional exam. Basically, this one is called the Cannibal Execution. What is the Cannibal Execution, you might ask? Well, in the series, they explain it simply put. And Arroyo points this out, though, obviously. It's a freaking dodgeball game. Yep, a dodgeball game. But you can use magic in the thing. You can't use the magic to attack your, the actual opponents. You can use the balls. You can enhance the ball of magic. And, of course, basically, it's Miss class basically has to fight each other. And, of course, Aroma and Az are on two different teams. And in the case of Claire, she's the same team as, of course, Aruma. Now, I forgot to mention Aruma has his ring. I did mention this before, he does have his ring, and of course it does get improved in these episodes, where basically it's like a turntable on the actual ring itself. There is about four different settings. The fourth one, Aruma, is forbidden to use unless it's an actual emergency. It's one of these, uh, basically this type of spell unleashes all the magic at once, and it'll be a while before you can actually get more magic again. Basically level one, which is the demon level, it's basically the weak flame. And... As it turns, basically, it gets bigger and bigger, but don't use the, the, the following way. This him now, Sullivan does tell him the actual spell to activate the last one, but he doesn't don't say it because it will activate it. Him saying it's not much of an issue, but so. And throughout the dodgeball game, while everybody gets eliminated, and it's down to Aruma and Aziz. Eventually, of course, she he uses like the mentioned things with Z's power 
basically throw the thing back as these and basically hits a shoulder like graze it and apparently he's eliminated so basically Aruma Aruma is basically promoted to a bet that's what he wanted to do it was recommended by uh, uh, Azami the student council president by the way he actually finds out at the start of the very next arc that she's student council president I'm like really you're in that fancy office and you don't realize she's student council president we'll get to that so he's promoted to a bet, and at the start of the very next arc of the thing, where he's in the first year tower, where he's having a cafeteria lunch, and he's wondering, like, where the heck is everybody? Well, they mentioned about the battleers, and basically you have a battleer kind of a group, and Aruma compares it to clubs. Basically, the way they describe these groups, yeah, they're essentially both, they're, they're the clubs. And I'm like, okay, that's actually quite ingenious. We have actual clubs in the series. Now, as far as I can tell when it comes to other series that have clubs per se, not a lot of them per se usually uses this thing. Usually a lot of the time the characters are usually too busy with other things to involve with clubs. I mean, you could say that... Uh, you could probably say... Maybe you had something like this in Battle Axe Love, except that the main character is not involved with clubs, so basically focus on studying, which is nice for him to do. <laughs> yep, so they have these particular battleers who want to go after the first years, and they basically kind of like force them to do. Like if Aziz is there to protect him, Claire, and Aruma, put them in like this wall of fire, kick them all away. And then, of course, then the student council president shows up, which this is when he finds out that she's a student council president. He's like, yeah, no idea. And by the way, uh, after they first met, after they had the first conversation, he she put her number in his phone. So it's kind of a reverse trope where the girl, where basically, usually the guy asked the girl for a number. Here, she literally put her, her number in his phone. Mm-hmm. And later on, they're messaging each other about the first few episodes of this thing. Where he messaged that he had no idea that she was a student council president. Which seems pretty happy for her. Of course, he does to, to talk to her about it later on. Where he's very impressed that his second year made made it to be a student council president. He's very impressed with that. And he's very pleased with her for her for doing that. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, she's offering him to join the student council. He doesn't necessarily join, per se. And throughout this, basically, his ring starts to act up and he runs into a brand new character. Yes, there are several new characters in Jews in this arc. Oh boy. And yes, there is a lot of new characters that I introduce here. Okay, let me bring them up here. Well, hmm. yeah, I have to bring it up on the actual website itself. Sorry about this. Okay, so in by the way, this is called the Division Party Arc. Yes, we are introduced to also Bars Robin. He's a new teacher for of many new characters in Juice's very arc. He's teach talks about familiars. And everybody summons some familiars. A rumor had to summon his, who just happens to be his his misfits teacher. And of course, the he pretty much is one teaching. Of course, he does not know the fact that this fluffy thing is actually the, the, the teacher. Yeah, it's a quick, quick little standalone thing. And of course, the rookie hunt dealt in the second episode of this thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the characters who's here, we have. You have Levy, one of the demon heroes, who also is one of the top people here. Let's see. Yeah, 13 heroes are simply put like people in charge. So he also introduces Lord Bao, who looks like a, a guy in a Hawaiian shirt. The other heroes who are seen here are Bazabeth, who is basically the leader here. We also have Azel Henry, who is actually Azel's father. We have Behemoth. Who was the glutton guy? You have, let's see, you have Pazma, who is the principal spirit. Yes, seriously. You also have 
Baal, who was a thunder god. Seriously. And appearance-wise, if you take away the ears about this guy, he looks like, if you give him a lot more muscle, he looks he looks almost very similar to... Um, what was his name? He's Mockrop's grandson from Fairy Tale. I, I kind of forgot his name. He looks almost exactly like him, especially the same hairstyle. You have Aruma, who's basically aware of. Ezra Henry is kind of like the chief of security, who, during the meeting, he's interrupted. Yeah, he's the chief of security for Team Border Patrol. And, uh, and he's Amari's father. Of course, they have to get to probably a little bit later. Of course, anybody can tell just by looking at these two. Of course, there are a few people absent. From the meeting per se, uh, they don't really say exactly. The one person they say that was missing purely because of the fact that they were simply unavailable. So there is also one other character in Juice here. Oh, he's also Subaru's uncle. Bal is. Uh, let's see if I can find him here. You have Kiro. Yeah, he's introduces a brand new character in this arc. Yeah, so <laughs> pretty much we have it where they, they kind of discuss with each other. And of course, on the phone, they're the health phone. So basically, how Aruka, Aruma has introduced him, basically, his ring, acting crazy. And he just happens to bump into him, basically, because of his collar he's wearing. Which, according to him, is made from the same exact material as the one he of his ring. So he mentioned his group, and later on he does run into him later on, where he eventually does decide to join his group, and of course Aziz and Claire join the group too. And of course she he does finally, of course, I mean, uh, uh, me, uh, she's basically trying to tell Rook that she really wants to see him. It is very heavily implied that she's in love with him. She basically is falling because of how, like, it's commonly described by some people how cute he is by several women in the series. Now, he's probably very handsome, but I wouldn't describe a 14-year-old boy as cute, per se. So, eventually he does talk to her, and he decides not to join the student council at this point. He will eventually join, don't worry about that. He does join very briefly for some other thing. And apparently he discussed it with two other conversations, and they're still on, and, they're, and, they're, and, they're perfect, and she's perfectly fine with his decision. And then we see them meeting up at the magical antiquities room, which they've heard some of the there was a junk room, the garbage room, or the storage closet. Because of a bunch of magic items. And basically he sees the device with his heart shaped thing, where he pits together pretty easily. Because he mentions he's good at building stuff. I'm like, okay, that's interesting. Good character one for him. So Pretty much like at the together, we're seeing an action. Then, of course, we see that, well, Kiro uh, is basically planning to destroy the school for reasons not explained just yet, per se. We'll get, we'll get to that later on. So, basically, they're playing the Battle Leaders Party. Basically, the way Aruma describes it is Parents' Night. Yes, seriously, that's literally what it is Parents' Night. Where everybody's parents get a chance to come to take a visit to the school, which that's going to be quite interesting, to say the least. And, of course, well, in the case of Claire, pretty much the whole family is coming. Aruma, presumably, his, 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 uh, his grandfather, Sullivan, is going to be coming. Though he got arrested by the chief of security for a fake crime, even though it's actually true. For illegally entering the human world, so he's being detained for a while, so he won't attend it. But that leads into the plot of this thing. And as for, it says, he does mention, I think he... Uh, does not want his mother to attend. I don't know if she's overbearing. It's not really implied. It's almost like he doesn't want his mother on at all. But he does mention his brother's going to join. 
Now, Saburo does mention his sister is going to be coming. And this, of course, is really good character stuff for these people. Mm -hmm. And, of course, what's the Ruiz group basically plan doing? Well, they want to do fireworks. Yeah, so... Basically, he borrows the, according to Azami, the Forbidden Text, a.k.a. the Romance Manga, First Love Memories, in order to show off this one panel, which has fireworks, because these demons have never seen fireworks before. I mean, first it's the Sakura Tree, now it's fireworks. So they basically put together this cannon that basically builds up, and they put it together, and of course it's decorated, of course, and of course you have two, two you have a couple basically poke in front of the thing, Think, oh, what was what, what that chimney? And of course, they all glare at them, and of course, they just walk away. We also see the introduction of a secret room. This actually is in Juice in episode 15. Of this room is basically just activated via this random wall, you just, where basically you have Kiro. He just pops one, push one brick, and goes through no problem. Here's the thing also a room also gets this room too. But here's something quite unique, though. How does he find out about this room? Of course, he, he's obviously asked about this. His ring. Just basically, just asked where he is, and just basically touched, he just didn't touch for himself, he just walked right in. And according to Rukuruka, this basically is the, this room introduced by his senior. Basically, someone probably a couple of class, a couple of years ahead of him. And of course, they also bring up this is a special window, where they basically describe it as soundproof. You can basically, it's soundproof and it's sort of in a way, a one-way window. Where the people on the inside can see what the outside is doing, but the inside, nope, they can't. Which I'm like, that's interesting to say at least. Maybe they'll play a role in the future episode, who knows. Mm-hmm. Yep. But I gotta say, pretty good set of episodes, and I'm definitely looking forward to discussing the remaining episodes, which, at this point, we I have exactly nine more episodes left to go, but I'm not going to be heading back to the arc just yet, per se. Yes, I do have five episodes left to go, but there's a couple more anime I really want to do first. First of which is going to be Restaurant in the World, then, of course, it's going to be Case Closed, then I should go back to the series before I get those two. There's a couple of comic cards I want to do first, okay? Thanks, video. Bye.